A massive thank you to Master Chief, Jonah, Chong, Sean, and IRN for subscribing to the channel. If you want to be featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone, and welcome back guys to a brand new video, where today we're here back with round 17 of Season 7 of the F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Yes, just seven races to go of this series on this game, and of course, as always, a massive, massive thank you to you guys for the continued support. I think this is the first video I've actually recorded where we've hit 50k in the My Team series series anyway so yeah i cannot thank you guys enough you know this has been such a fun series to do on the channel over the last pretty much year now at the time of recording this and yeah just seven races to go before we jump in with f1 22 of course if you missed out on the video yesterday where we did a deep dive on f1 manager as well i would highly highly recommend going back and checking that one out obviously a lot of information from another game that i'm very very uh you know sort of hotly anticipating but yeah not only can i say thank you for 50,000 subscribers 51k has ticked off as well i i just don't know what's happening anymore so i i guess now we've got to say if you're not already subscribed make sure you do so so we can try and get one step closer to 60,000 subscribers yeah that would be greatly greatly appreciated as well there but of course if you missed out on the Singapore GP uh, that went live on Monday if I remember correctly Highly, highly recommend going back and checking that one out. A fantastic race. As always, Singapore did deliver the drama. And, of course, there will be spoilers in just a moment. In fact, there's going to be spoilers pretty much now. Was Actually, just quickly, can I do any more upgrades on the car? Or have I got to wait for Mercedes to bring them? Mercedes there... And I'm guessing, yeah, Mercedes as well there. So we should have a couple of extra upgrades on the car uh, by the end of the year. But yeah, championship-wise, though, with seven races to go, we still lead the way. 44 points clear over George Russell at the moment. Like I said, seven races to go, which means a maximum availability of 182 points. So pretty much only the top eight now in the championship are still within championship contention, of course. That will require Sonoda to have the best run of form I've ever seen. Really, it's, yeah, just a dogfight between myself and Russell, unless Perez can go on an absolute tear late on in the year there. And just 33 now behind Red Bull in the Constructors. So we've still got to try and hope Verstappen continues on with the good work he's shown in more recent weeks. But today we head back to Suzuka, and that can be a bit of a challenge. Let's dive into it then here back in Japan. Formula One is finally back in 2022 and now you can rep your favourite teams. Of course, using the F1 store, every team now has merch lineups available, whether you're an Aston Martin fan, a Williams fan, Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, the choice is completely up to you. But yeah, check out the F1 merch store down below for all the official releases from all of the teams. And of course, as always, if you use our links as well, you massively help support the channel. So yeah, give it a look and see if there's anything you like. A nice little kick of oversteer there as we head out the final corner, but then back at the iconic, but still very bumpy Suzuka circuit then here on F1 2021. Of course, yeah, very, very bumpy, as that is not the line through the first corner. But yeah, one other big thing to remember here at Suzuka, most of the curbs are lethal, as that immediately is going to be demonstrated. But yeah, so you've really got to try and avoid them as best as possible this weekend. Can make it quite a tough test, of course, because the AI... Yeah, they tend to just be able to sort of mount the curbs anyway. That being said, though, of course, just due to the high-speed nature of most of the Suzuka circuits, still should be able to find a lot of delta around the faster parts of the lap. I'm actually running 8-10 wings here early on in practice. We're still gaining, what, close to a second between Spoon and the Casio Triangle. Down in towards the final chicane, though, we go. Attack the curbs through there. Make sure we get the power down up towards the line. It's just a bit of a blend off the throttle as we get close to the line. That's going to be purple. Okay. While slowly finding a bit more pace and confidence in the car, then as we come towards the end of our qualifying sim run. Yeah, not 100% sure, can't quite remember whether it's a decent representative here at Suzuka, but we should be back up into at least the green, maybe even the purple score as we attack the curbs once more through the Casio Triangle. Try and put the power down up towards the line there, almost been it into the pit lane, that at the final corner. That is going to still be green. Not bad. Let's get into qualifying. Well, if Q1 times are anything to go by, things could get very, very interesting here at Suzuka, as that might be just a little bit too much curb to start our first run here in Q2. We were ninth, three tenths off pole position there. Giovinazzi, both Ferraris, both Alpha Towers, Mercedes, Red Bulls. 
and of course our teammate Verstappen there were all very, very tightly matched at the end of Q1, and even the likes of McLaren and Aston Martin were not far away. So yeah, things could get very, very interesting here. It's just trying to slowly build up confidence with the car, just so we can try and make sure. Fast laps, I think, on the softs and might just see people sneak into the 24s. This will be now where probably George Russell was like a 24-4 or something mad. There we go, Yuki Tsunoda, homeboy down onto a 25-3. Oh, well, I'm sure he'd love to try and win here at Suzuka. Down in towards the final braking zone of the lap, just trying to not snag the inside wheel. Not the best run out of the Casio Triangle, but of course doing this lap on the medium shouldn't be a representative. And it's still a 26 dead there, so that's not bad going. That's about where you'd expect to be. I said, if we could get under a 26, I'd be incredibly happy, but five thousandths away, I'm, I'm not going to go away kicking myself. Right, just under six minutes left on the clock, then let's go out for a run on a set of fresh, soft compound tyres. There, try and get the nice line out of the final corner. No wheel spin, no theatrics that time round. So we open up the DRS, and let's see, yeah, now if we can try and find, you know, sort of close to a second, I'd be pretty happy there. Just got to try and make it through safely into Q3. That is the worst line I've done through Turn 1 all weekend so far. And that immediately puts us on the back foot. We're really trying to attack through the S's now. we got to try and chase time. And this could get a little bit difficult there. Big mistake through Turn 1. Definitely lost a good sort of couple of tenths from it. And then even there, through the S's, where you'd expect these tyres to provide a lot more grip, we barely are back in the green. Tap the curbs through the Degners. Just running a little bit wide on the exit. We are all over the show. There's only one lap of fuel remaining. This has really not been a good lap so far. Yeah, nice power though out of the hairpin. We still need to find just a few more tents there. Boss has currently down on a 1093. In towards Spoon, one of the most weirdly difficult corners of the lap. Oh, again, just attacking the curbs there. Running a little bit wide on exit to get on the throttle. Really try and maximise the run off the corner. And how far away from Bottas are we going to be? Okay, we are going to be a couple of tenths away. But this final sector we're always pretty strong. Honestly, I'm tempted to just go straight in and do another lap here. But breaking down in towards the final chicane. Trying to tap the curbs as best as possible. No wheel spin on the exit. And look at that, only quarter of a second up. So that is not going to be a very good representative there. Only puts us P9. But we haven't even got enough, enough fuel to go for another lap here. So that is not reassuring, as you can just see through turn one. When you get the line nailed, three tenths immediately. And I think, to be honest, what we probably should have done is abandoned that second run, or the first run on this set of tyres there, because now we're not, I don't think, going to have enough time to get back out again right towards the end of the session. We're going to try, but I'm not convinced we've got enough. No, we're not going to have enough time to go back out. One of this Mercedes, that stroll has just come over the finish line with a minute 20 left on the clock so that might well be us out in Q2 then here in Suzuka to be honest yeah trying to start the race on that completely destroyed set of tyres might not be such a good thing but it all goes a bit pear-shaped here around a track that punishes you like no other and there we go then the end of Q2 Lando Norris goes fastest on a 124.6 but we could only muster up P13 there and I mean those three tenths down at turn one alone, and obviously a little bit more time around the lap, we could have easily made it through into Q3 and been right in the running. So not what we wanted here at the start of the Japanese Grand Prix, but we're just going to have to get our head down, try and use a bit of a better strategy on the tyres, and fingers crossed we can still recover something today. You've just got to spot your breaking point down at turn one, and that can be super difficult. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula One team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months, and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years, and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself, as well as thousands of others, trust Bybit as their crypto.
We come to you live today from the Mie Prefecture in the south of Japan's Honshu Island for a race that has seen many title deciders over the years. Some simple, some controversial, but all contributing to a legacy that makes the Japanese Grand Prix an indispensable stop in any Formula One season. 18 corners make up a lap of the incredible figure of eight Suzuka circuit, with 10 to the right and eight to the left for a distance of 3.6 miles. Average lap speeds around here are fairly quick. If it stays dry, then expect somewhere in the region of 136 miles per hour. Alongside me once again for coverage of today's race, it's none other than the great Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Mr. Monaco. What do you make of their performance so far this season? It's been a really solid year so far. There have been some incredible standout performances, but what's really impressed me has been the consistency. With this kind of form, I'm expecting another great race today. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. George Russell will begin today's event from pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Norris, Verstappen, Lance Stroll and Sonoda, Giovinazzi, Leclerc, Sainz and Daniel Ricciardo, Bottas, Mr. Monaco, Esteban Ocon and Mazepin, Latifi, Lundgaard, Jack Aitken and Robert Schwartzman, Giotto, Eilert, Joe and Mick Schumacher. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Clearly, Anthony Davidson, they're a fan of our consistency over the course of the year. I mean, we've had Belgium, where we DNF'd, and I think apart from that, we've been pretty consistently in the points throughout the entirety of this, well, 16 races already in this campaign there. And today, of course, yes, yeah, Suzuka, round 17 of 23. Strategy today, though, soft medium. It, when would it ever be any different, especially around Suzuka? You know, you can gain quite a bit in the second half of the Grand Prix there. I did consider doing the alternate strap, but I just don't think it's worth it early on, potentially losing a couple of places here. However, because of the bumps at Suzuka down the start finish straight, it is often one of the only circuits where you can make up places off the start. I'm sure by saying that I've probably just jinxed myself and we're going to lose about four spots before we make it to turn one. But let's dive into it then here for the Japanese Grand Prix. Round 17 of the year. Five red lights. And it is going to be lights out. And away we go. And not my worst start on F1 there. As you can see, Sonoda. And I think that was... I'm not sure who that was actually alongside him. Not getting a good run in towards turn one. That was his teammate Lance Stroll there. So they were almost five wide for a moment in towards the first corner. We've just got to try and safely navigate our way through as we head in towards the S's for the first time. Luckily, we got promoted one place after qualifying because of Zhou Guan Yu. And immediately then, we're going to lose a whole lot of places. And behind Zhou Guan Yu and down to last off the start of the Grand Prix there. Back end just suddenly snapping out from underneath me. Not quite sure how that one happened. And if we ever had a mammoth task and a bit of a mountain to climb today... I've just decided to make it a whole lot more difficult for myself. So not the start we would have wanted here at Suzuka. But look how early the AI break into the hairpin. We'll pick off two spots then immediately on this opening lap. As what is going on with the balance of the car on heavy fuel there. Joe Grand, you've got to follow me past Luca Giotto here. As we head down the back straight. Or down in towards Spoon even I should say. But yeah, not the best start then we wanted here at Suzuka. Just like qualifying. This track will punish you super easily, but we can't afford to rest on our laurels today. Like we said, George Russell and Sergio Perez here looking like they want to try and get a 1-2 at Suzuka. Verstappen, I think, sat up currently in about P4, though, of the Grand Prix. He's just running a bit wide through 130. We won't try and capitalise the place of Jack Aitken because of it, but Russell leads then at the end of that one, and we are down in P20. You know what I need to do? I need to channel my inner Kimi Raikkonen, I think, today, as Jack Aitken just runs out of battery as we cross over the line there. We're going to force him defensive to the outside in towards turn one. Oh, a little bit of contact there between myself and Russell. Uh, sorry, between myself and Aitken. I thought he was going to back out of it, but apparently not there as the yellow flags out. He just lifted off in towards the first corner, so I thought he didn't want the battle. But apparently Jack Aitken wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do there. We do get a warning. Like I said, I think that is probably fair. 
But yeah, I thought he lifted out just to give me the place. It's pretty much immediately then. All over the back of Mick Schumacher, who does not get the power down off the Degners. So that's going to be a second warning that time around. I think that one's a bit unfair. But up the inside of Mick and just closing the door on the exit of the hairpin. Like I said, trying to channel my inner Kinemi Raikkonen today. Might be a bit more difficult. Uh, sorry, easier said than done. Next up, Eilon. Could use a little bit of battery at the inside in towards 130R there, and Williams in this series is nowhere near as good as it is in the My Team career mode. Eilat must have clearly got the memo about what happened to Jack Aitken because he did not want to battle that one out through 130R. And back up then into P17, so obviously against the slower AI, we are able to pick up pieces rather early. DRS have we enabled. DRS is being enabled this lap. We can use DRS when you are within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. That's up the inside of Schwartzman. He's 16 now, so picking off these cars nice and early. Got to get back to where we qualified first. I don't even think today we're just trying to channel our inner Kimi Raikkonen. I think we're also trying to channel our inner Kamui Kobayashi here, as we're hopefully we're going to try and do a mirror move to what we did on his Williams teammate a lap ago. Up the inside of Latifi down the back straight. You can hear the steering wheel rattling away. I apologise for that if you can hear it a bit too much in the video. Nice team liking that one though back up into p15 now of the grand prix so overtakes are obviously going to get more difficult as the afternoon goes on but still just trying to pick up the pieces early in this race as we should be able to get the drs on lungard don't care jeff please don't do the same as jack aitken as we get back down towards turn one no i gave him room that time and is he keeping the place my first ever teammate in f1 2021 christian lungard yes he is that time around, I thought we won't kill both Alfa Romeos today. We'll, we'll give one of them a chance. Oh, Lungard again, not getting a run off the Degners at the inside into the hairpin. Oh, he jumps out of the way at the last moment there because that was very much a Banzai move. But it is a move we pulled off. Now, I'm in a 14th place then. Next up, Nikita Mazepin. So we have almost recovered back to where we started here. We're still in on lap 4 of 27. We're coming to the end of lap 6 then. Team want me just to stretch out the stint a little bit longer here as we're starting to make a bit more progress on Nikita Mazepin. I think he's just sort of getting towed along. The same with Ocon just in front of him. Well, you know, the sort of quicker McLarens and all the other cars a bit further up the road as you can just see through the final chicane how much time we gain over Nikita. Going to have the DRS on him, but obviously he's going to have the We're DRS on the cars in front. Seconds. I mean, 7.4 seconds after everything that's gone on early on here, as why has Mass been breaking that early into Turn 1? I guess that's probably you know, one of the smaller questions we've ever had about the Russian driver. Um, but, yeah, fingers crossed we can move past him soon and focus on trying to still pick up places. We've navigated all the really easy cars. Now things get a bit more challenging. See if we can try and get a good run out of Spoon on Nikita. Then the AI don't tend to use as much battery down this back straight, but that Alpine, of course, is no slouch towards the top end there. Don't want to get too close behind him before 130R, but you can see on the exit, much, much more confident there, but the Russian never really going to give any more room than he has to. Around the outside we go through the Casio Triangle, slam that door shut on the exit, and now back him into P13. That brings you up the place team happy with that move. We, we play with fire and we got away with it this time. Next up, Ocon, who doesn't have DRS anymore off Ricardo. As, again, the old line down at turn one is apparently not leaving my memory. So now, one that later as we get to one third's distance in this Grand Prix. Going to have the DRS of Esteban Ocon. That's what we like to hear. To the inside at turn one. Oh, it's a daring move, but we do somehow just get the car in front there by virtue of the overspeed. And that could have gone really badly, but now finally, it's only taken us nine laps, and so we're back to where we started in this Grand Prix. Now, we can start to make progress now. I said now way too many times in that sentence. Oh, for Sappen in, end of lap nine. Jeff going to tell me that as well. Max is coming in for his stop. There we go. A couple of other cars into the pits. We're going to try and go a little bit longer. You'll be on the mediums. It's looking like a lot of these guys are going on to hard. So intrigued to see how many AI will make the call. Yeah, most of the AI then still going on to hard compound tyres. I guess the two questions at the moment is... A. Who will actually make the gamble and go on to the same strategy as I will? It's not uncommon for the AI to do soft medium. They have some kind of mechanical problem. Well, that's going to help us out as well then. Ricardo next car up the road and he's losing time fast. Oh, ho, ho. Really trying to get the power down at a spoon. 
But yeah, now we're going to have to see one of the Red Bulls in, probably the other one in end of lap 11. We're probably going to box end of lap 12. But the other question is, are any of these guys going to get held up by slower traffic that could potentially leapfrog us up even higher? It's Ricardo then into the pits at the end of that lap. The same can be said for Sainz and I think Sonoda. So George Russell then still going out as Perez. There we go. So Sergio Perez is going to be going on to the same strategy as myself. So I can only imagine Russell is going to be doing the same. So sadly, unless we get a safety car, a win might be off the cards today. Just got to keep pushing. There we go. George Russell into the pit. So we should take the lead then of the Grand Prix for at least one lap here. These tyres are starting to give up as well. As all you just see, missing the apex by about a foot there through the Casio Triangle, but put the power down up towards the line. Is Russell still going to be ahead of Perez? I think he should. Yeah, no, Perez didn't get held up behind Ocon, so yeah, Russell should still re-inherit the lead of the Grand Prix, obviously, once I pit, but it is actually going to be fairly close still between those top two. I guess our battle today might really be with Lando Norris, because he was running P3 and kind of uh, broke away from the midfield pack, but wasn't quite obviously able to match the Red Bulls. What I could have really done was a safety car right now in this Grand Prix. Okay, Russell and Perez are still taking time out of me. Yeah, I think that's going to be rather difficult, Jeff, but we are going to pit then at the end of this one. Now I'm not sure why the team wanted me to go the extra lap on this set of softs. They wanted me to box end of lap 13, but I thought that was because of a staff and wanted to pit lap 12, but apparently not. As into the pits we come then here at Suzuka. Make sure we get the car slowed down nice and tidy. Not taking massive risk on pit entry, but I think by the looks of it, we might actually come out around where the Haas cars are then in this Grand Prix, so we might have done quite a good job overcutting quite a few people here. Luckily for the first time in weeks, the team aren't going to change the front wing for no reason. 2.6 seconds stop there, and yeah, we might overcut our way massively up the order here as we head out down the pit lane. Heading out of the pits. And yeah, look at that, straight up now into P8 of the Grand Prix, so we've worlded that one. That's one of the biggest overcuts I've ever done on this game. And now, Sykes and Stroll, hopefully, are going to be easy pickings on harder, older tyres. This race is not over. Perez goes fastest. We go through the fastest sector two, though. The fastest lap of the race. So maybe Checo going to be able to try and apply some pressure to Russell by the end of this one. But I think Sykes has just kept hold of the DRS from Stroll in front of him. As Yeah, look at that. Fastest sector two, fastest sector three. We've got to try and get fastest lap here. Bonus points could still be critical by the end of the year. I mean, look at this grip we've got over the Ferrari at the moment. I'm sure through the S's he'll romp away. Just watch. Look, I mean, there's no way we can ever take the curb that the AI do. You can't even look at that curb. It'll spin you around. And there's Sainz just attacking all of them. Like he's got not a care in the world. I mean, I do love this game. But it is those little things that still kind of ruin it. Especially, you know, if you're playing the game quite a long time. But all over the back now of Carlos Sainz. Don't really want to have a look for a move into Spoon, I won't lie. As again, that curb as well you can't touch. That was a big, big save. But I, I, I'm going to play it off cool. Uh, but anyway, can we try and get a run now? Down the back straight here on Carlos. Don't probably want to look for a move into 130R. But if he's a little bit cautious on the way through, might be able to get up and under on the way out there. And that's exactly what we've done. Straight line breaking into the Casio Triangle. Give him a squeeze over that inside curb. And we just pulled off a similar move to what okay, we did to Mazepin. You fastest lap of the day as well? Not quite. Because now we're going to get some DRS off Stroll, who doesn't have any office teammates in odor. Stroll not able to put the power down quite where he would have wanted on the exit of the hairpin. I think we're going to try and do a bit of a similar move to what we did to Sainz just a lap ago. Again, don't want to have a look for a move in towards Spoon. We'll avoid that curve though, like the plague this time around. Let's come and get a run on the exit of Spoon. Try and use the battery as early as possible. The AI, like I said, don't tend to use much deploy down this part of the lap there. Stroll not going to go particularly defensive, so we will have a look to the inside then. As George Russell goes even faster, and we now move past that Stroll in this Grand Prix. So back up now into P6 of the day as we accidentally get all over the bollard through the Casio Triangle. Up towards the line, though. Still not quite able to get fast as lap. Manage your tyres. Got to try and sneak that fastest lap bonus point away from Russell. Oh, Russell finding even more time. This will be the chance to try and set a new fast lap of the day. 
try and be really aggressive on the brakes or attack the curbs through the final chicane and try and get all over the back of Stro uh, sorry, Sonoda as well. As out of the final corner, up towards the line. There we go, 26-8. And as we say that, we'll move to the inside of Sonoda, homeboy. And move up now into P5 of the Grand Prix. So, yeah, Verstappen, two seconds up the road. Lando Norris is not uncatchable by the end. So we got 10 laps, or 11 laps even, the gap 5.3 to Norris, so about half a second a lap. And if we're going quicker than the Red Bulls, fingers crossed we're going quicker than the Alpha Tauri. Right, two-thirds distance then, all over the back now of our teammate Verstappen, and I'm hoping if we continue this sort of pace, we should definitely get to Lando Norris before the end of the GP there, as heading through the Casio, well, heading into the Casio Triangle, look how much we gain on the brakes, those hard tyres. Just do not work. I hate to think how many times I've said that on the entirety of this game's life cycle. But now, surely Verstappen just let us have it, mate. To the outside we go. We should have much more overspeed there. And look at that. Clean around the outside of our teammate. Back down towards turn one. First time I've done that line through turn one, though. The, the awful line. I think I'm going to dub it. But remember, we were last on lap one of this Grand Prix. And we could still battle out for a podium. It's not quite Kimi Raikkonen 17th to 1st, but technically it's more overtakes. Oh, there we go. New the fastest, fastest lap. lap of the race. Keep this up. Taking another quarter of a second out of my personal bets, just because I'm very, very worried. George Russell, I feel, is just setting himself up for a fastest lap on the last lap, as that is definitely going to immediately eliminate, uh, immediately eliminate any chance of another one this time round. But Lando, 1.6 seconds up the road. Gap is still coming down. I think the pace on those hards is getting better. Just over five laps to go then here from Suzuka and try now to get within the one second zone of Lando Norris. Of course, if we can get the DRS, then we should be able to gain a little bit more free time down the front straight. There we can just see how late we are now on the brakes. Just trying to take every last bit of grip out of these tyres, but they've got to make it to the end, remember. That's the other critical thing, as we always gain a lot of time through the Casio Triangle. Nowhere near going to be close enough down towards turn one, so we may as well just save a bit of battery that time round. It's just running a little bit wide oh, on the way the in. Ahead, but be aware that these tyres need to last till the end of the race. And Jeff often says stupid things on F1 2021, but that is a big consideration there, as you can just see. Tucked up in the dirty air, a lot of understeer as we rise our way up through Dunlop once more. Oh, car wanted to upset on the exit, but we kept it in line all over the back of Lando Norris as we head through 130R. Not going to try and look for a move down at the Casio Triangle. Oh, I might accidentally have to look for a move there as Lando just breaking 10 feet earlier, or 10 metres earlier than I was expecting. Almost locked up into the back of him, but surely this should be a nice easy move as we start that 24 here at Suzuka. He's going to go defensive. Honda will not like this, but around the outside of Lando Norris we go there and Honda Power could have had a 1, 2, 3 today. But we've just got nice enough move. in the tank. Good job. Four laps to go. Perez, 11 seconds. Russell, 15 seconds up the road. I'm not even convinced we would have had the pace to match them today anyway. Although, eh, maybe with the right strategy, we could have stuck close. But that Red Bull was always going to be formidable around here. And just shows you how a mistake in qualifying. And then another one the early on in the race can really affect seconds. your rhythm. These are the sorts of things you don't want late on in the championship battle, but this is why we've worked so hard to build up the cushion we have. So another new fastest lap then. 126.50 that time round. So just trying to make sure we go low enough on the time that Russell can't beat it, but I'm still just half expecting There's us. Been an incident on track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now. Ooh, just be careful. Someone's had issues. I know over the radio a couple of laps ago they said Stroll was struggling and you can just see the big train behind him. So maybe there's something going on back there. But yeah, three laps to go here. And I'm still half expecting Russell just to put in like a 26-2 for fun on the final lap. Oh, and there we go. It was even quicker. It was even quicker Russell than I said it would be. So George Russell, 26-1. There's going to be no way I can match that late on in the day. The Red Bull, they just play with your heart on this game but yeah starting the final lap then final lap. Final lap of the race. here from Suzuka been once again a very very eventful and action-packed race but a good fun nonetheless there and always fun to come back to this circuit you know it's a driving experience like no other on F1 2021 you just feel constantly on edge even on the very last lap there as you head into the S's just don't want to hit any 
of those curbs. But George Russell and Red Bull, they looked pretty much unstoppable this weekend. And I mean, if he's able to execute that sort of pace later on in the day, yeah, I'm not convinced we would have been able to do much better than at P3 here anyway, had things gone right there. That's a big, big gap, 17 seconds to have pulled out by the end here in Suzuka. But always fun, like I said, to come back to Japan. You know, I can't wait to see the Japanese Grand Prix return this uh, this year in real life as well there. Got away a little while still, but I mean, we're already in June, so it's not too far away as well. But down through Spoon for the final time then here for the Japanese Grand Prix. We were P22 on the opening lap, but P3 in the end is a decent recovery drive, but Red Bull, they are still fast. They are still formidable. And George Russell, he goes even faster on the final lap of the day. The gap at the top comes down from 44 to 33 points there. We went from hashtag blessed to... Oh, I can't remember what Verstappen says when he wins a race. Uh, it's just thank you, boys, I think. But there we go. Great drive, great drive. We're really happy with that performance. So, another fantastic victory for Red Bull today. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams. And they're certainly proving themselves. That lead at the top of the table has shrunk somewhat today. Some amazing talent out on the track today. But Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? I have to give it to Mr Monaco. They demonstrated a very delicate touch in close proximity to other cars, as well as showing a lot of maturity and patience in difficult situations. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Red Bull pull further ahead in the standings. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. Well, Ant, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, there we are then, guys. The end of the uh, Japanese Grand Prix there here from Suzuka. Very, very interesting, and yeah, decent recovery drive when all is said and done. But Red Bull, 1-2 on the grid, 1-2 at the end of the day there. George Russell, pole position, fastest lap, race victory, all in the day's work for our fellow Brit there. But yeah, he comes through and takes a big, big chunk out of us in the Drivers' Championship. Perez P2, we do round out the podium there, so more silverware to take home to the team. Lando P4 ahead of Verstappen, Sonoda, Sainz, Gio, Ocon, and Charles Leclerc. So Aston Martin and Alpine getting a few more points there. Stroll just dropped out of the points by the end ahead of both McLarens there. Everyone, though, making it through to the end of the GP, so a good job done by everyone for keeping it clean and tidy for the most part. And yeah, like I said, gap at the top comes down to just 33 points. Uh, Verstappen, though, he does good effort there. Jumps past Charles Leclerc and Lance Stroll there. Seven races to go now of... Uh, sorry, six races to go now of the campaign. So technically, it's gone from eight to four there. 156 points available. But Max Verstappen wouldn't take it by virtue of not having enough race victories by the end of the year there. So it is now, yeah, just a dogfight between myself and... Both Red Bulls and Lando Norris for the Drivers World Championship. Constructors wise, though, that's heading more and more in Red Bull's direction there as Alpha Tauri jumped Ferrari by just one point as we head into the final few races of the year there. But a 52 point gap to Red Bull isn't impossible to overcome, but will be rather difficult by the end of the campaign. Thank you all so much for watching, though, nonetheless. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well, and we will return very, very soon with more. F1 2021 content. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.